and welcome to my art studio. Um, this video is a part of a three-part video series all about taking the imagination that you have of a painting and actually making that a reality on the canvas in a way that you love and feel proud of and happy with. Um, so this whole video series is designed for anywhere from beginner artists who have never picked up a paintbrush and to those who would be somewhere in the realm of beginner to intermediate and perhaps you've been painting a while but you still lack a bit of confidence in being able to create, create the paintings that you really envision and really want to make. Um, if you haven't already checked out part one, I would definitely recommend to go check that out first and then come back to this video because they are organized uh, in a way to go through. Um, and I'll pop all the links to the, the different videos in the description box. So you can go and check out part one um, and then come back and join us in this video. And um, part one was all about planning a painting and how you have to have a destination in mind before you even start the journey. And so that's what we discussed in part one. Part two today is all about the skills that you need as an artist to be able to actually make that vision that you have in your head a reality on the canvas. And that's what we're gonna uh, dive into today. If you would like some more guidance, I actually have a free taster session um, which will go through these skills today in way more depth. Um, and you can go and check that out. I'll pop a link in the description box for a free taster session. It's a, a taster session for my painting course. And uh, I will kind of like describe each of these skills that we're gonna go through today. So all artists need, obviously, of course, a measure of skill to be able to bring the painting that they have in their head um, into life on canvas. Now we can break these skills down into the five core skills. That is drawing, value, composition, color, and technique. Without one of these, your painting is likely gonna be a bit of a hashtag fail because all of these things are so core to a painting and it's what makes a painting work. You know when you just see a painting and instantly you're like, wow. You just know it's been done by a professional artist. That's because that they have included all of these skills uh, within their painting set, uh, within themselves as artists. Now, even if you have like two or three of these skills, if you're missing any, it could be really detrimental to your artwork and literally make it from something that could be incredible to something a little bit mediocre. Now, mediocre is fine. I'm mediocre all over the place. Like, <laughs> mediocre is great, but if you feel like you want to get to that point where you are like absolutely soaring and feel like you wanna start selling your work maybe, and you wanna feel like you wanna do justice to the idea that you have, and you wanna make something that goes, wow, I made that, guys. Like, you, you've blown yourself away by what you've made. That is definitely possible for you. And I know that be, there'll be some of you hearing that now going, well, that's not possible for me. I've got no natural talent. I'm not, I'm not an artist. Trust me, you are. The only difference that separates those professional artists from you is they've got really good at failing on a daily basis, and I really mean that. There's nothing that separates professional artists um, from beginner artists apart from skill, time, dedication, and honestly just being okay with failing a lot and learning from that to improve. I'm definitely all for helping and guiding people on that path to really start to feel proud of what they make and to gain that confidence. And once you start gaining that momentum, seeing that improvement in your work, it really spurs you on. So I've heard a lot of people say, and um, even professional artists, that you don't need to learn how to draw to be able to paint. I mean, to me, that is just crazy, to be honest, because drawing isn't actually about drawing. Drawing is about the way you see something and you can then make that into a 2D image. Like drawing is way more about seeing than it is actually about drawing. It's, it's about seeing in like shapes and lines and objects and being able to put that in a representational way. So if anyone says you don't need to draw how to paint then, I don't know. I do not agree. <laughs> um, but the good news is that drawing doesn't have to look like uh, 10 hours pen detailed pencil work because to be honest that is so not up my street. I actually always disliked drawing. I found it boring. I wanted to get all the colors out. I wanted to get my paintbrushes out and to me drawing just always uh, I don't know it just kind of made me shudder a bit inside. It still does in a, in, in a way but I found a way to make drawing really fun and now I realize what how amazing drawing is and how much difference it makes to your painting, I recommend everybody just to draw, 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 draw. And if you don't like pencil, I really recommend trying out charcoal. That changed my whole 
opinion and approach to drawing. It makes it really fun. So if you really want to chuck yourself in at the deep end, just draw a portrait every day for 30 days. Just draw, draw, draw. And that's how I saw like the biggest improvement in my artwork is I focused on portraits for like a month and I did just like portrait after portrait and it teaches you so much because there's such a fine margin of getting it right because a portrait can so easily just look off or wrong or you know an eye looks a bit funny it's a bit harsh it's a harsh way of learning but if you want to chuck yourself in at the deep end then draw portraits before we leave the drawing part just remember think about what you're actually seeing not what you think you're seeing don't look at an object as oh that's an eye or that's lips just see shapes see lines see uh, shading and depth and draw that not the object that, or the subject that you're seeing. Uh, so second is value. Value basically means that if you take a photo of your painting and turn it black and white, you should still be able to understand exactly what the image is showing. When a painting looks amateur, it can very often be down to value and a person not quite understanding how value really works. So value is basically how light or how dark a subject is and it's what our brain understands first. Whenever we look at any painting, you might think we look at colour first, but actually we look at value first subconsciously. And that's what helps our brain understand what the image actually is. So that's value. And actually that to me, I think is one of the biggest things that makes a difference to your artwork. The third is composition. Again, this is another one of those really big ones that people kind of ignore, myself included in the past. Um, it was one that I never really truly understood how to get a good composition. I always just played it trial and error. I, th I thought I'd just like paint something and hopefully it'll have a good composition. It wasn't something that I truly prepared in advance, but now I prepare every single painting I ever do with the composition first. Like that is the number one thing I look at first before even going into anything else in the painting. Uh, because once you've nailed down the composition, it can actually make um, everything else look better. Even if your drawing skills are not great, even if your color mixing skills are not great, if you've got a great composition, it does like 70% of the work. Um, so definitely focus in on that one. Um, next is color. color can be a very uh, confusing thing, but it doesn't have to be. It's actually fairly simple when you break it down and the more you work with colour, the less intimidated you'll get by it. I remember not knowing or not having a clue how to make a certain colour and just adding, oh, a bit of this, oh, I'll add a bit of that and just kind of like keep adding paint till I tried to get the colour I wanted. And even if I did, I would never know how to recreate that colour. Now it's a completely different story. I realise that colour mixing is like adding ingredients. And once you understand um, how color works, you can literally make any color that you desire, pretty much using just three tubes of color. You don't need to go buy all the different colors that you see in art stores. In fact, I feel like paint shops kind of do a disservice to begin artists by giving this huge range of paint. You actually only need like three or four paint colors maximum to be able to do any painting. So that's one I'm pretty passionate about when I start talking about color. And um, the last one is technique. So this is all about understanding how to use your brush and how to get those certain marks that you want to get, uh, whether that's through brushes, palette knives, your finger, if you're into finger painting, however it is, it's, it's having that technique to get that onto the canvas and also the technique of knowing how to layer paints and how to create that um, painting in a very physical way. Um, what to paint on first, when to add details, when to varnish and all that sort of thing. So. These are the five core skills that all artists do need. If you find yourself thinking, oh, there's one or two on there that I think I could do with uh, brushing up on a little. And to be honest, I'd be a bit more worried if you didn't think that because every single one of us artists is always needing to learn, improve, just seek further education, I suppose. Like I myself understand and realize how much more there is to learn and I'm so eager and keen to do that. So yeah, I'd be worried if there wasn't something on there that you'd want to improve, to be honest. And if you would like to, as I say, learn a little bit more about how these play into the painting, I've got a free taster session for my online course, Learn to Paint with Confidence, where we go through really in depth all of these subjects. I have tons of exercises on all these subjects in Learn to Paint with Confidence. So 
if you are looking to kind of like further that a little bit more in your, your painting skills to really see that improvement in your artwork, then yes, there is a free taster session and we kind of like break down together um, how to do this from like a bird's eye view. But it's not like a physical painting session, it's kind of like what we've done today and talked about how it all fits together. Um, but you can go and check out that free taster session in the description box and I'll also leave a link to that in the comments as well. So go check that out. Uh, once you pop your email and name in, I'll like email it directly to your inbox and you can watch it whenever you like. So yeah, I hope that has maybe given you something a little to think about. Maybe it's very different to what you had in mind. Maybe it's pretty much the same, but I like to think of it as kind of like driving a car. When you first start learning how to drive, you don't go on the huge M1 or the highway for the first time before you even understand how the pedals work. And, and imagine if you were like going down the M1, or like a motorway or a highway for the first time and your instructor's saying like, okay, do you know where the window wipers are? Let's do the window wipers. Or oh, there's your indicator. This is this, the gear stick. You wouldn't do that. It would be dangerous. It would, it would be a disservice because you actually would feel completely overwhelmed and probably not learn anything and probably get in a serious accident. People approach painting a lot with that kind of like, okay, let's like learn it all. Let's create a masterpiece. And actually we have to go right back to the beginning and kind of like learn in these bite-sized chunks and then you gain confidence. And with each step, you make such a huge progress. And it doesn't have to be a long time either. Like my work changed to the point where you wouldn't even think that it was from the same person within about 30 days. And this is a process that I now teach inside my course because I know how much difference it makes. Anyway, I'm gonna stop babbling on now because I wanted this to be a short, snappy video. Um, but as I say, I'll pop the link to the previous lesson and the, the next one, if I've made it yet, um, in the description box. So you can go and check out all three parts to this video series. And also, if you like the sound of that free taster session to get some inspiration um, and have like a little bit of an idea of the, your next direction of where you wanna go, go and check that out in the description box and the comments. Okay, I'm babbling on too much now. Thank you so much guys and have a beautiful, inspiring day. Bye.